guys, welcome to Mom Minutes. And today I wanted to talk to you about the reasons why we started homeschooling. So um, I was actually a very reluctant um, homeschool mom. I really did not want to homeschool my kids um, when we first started out. Um, my uh, family and my friends, uh, you know, some of them were really excited about homeschooling, you know, basically from the get-go, as soon as they had the baby, they were like, we're going to homeschool. And I was like, nope, we're going to send our kids to school on the little yellow bus. You know, that's the way it should be. And, and I think too, was I didn't, I didn't feel very confident about my ability to teach my kids at home, but I really didn't have a desire to, I really wanted them to go to school because I thought, you know, they would, uh, the school teachers would do a better job and that sort of thing with them. So when our oldest one, uh, Samantha was four, um, she went to preschool and it was a free preschool. We lived on a military base. And so the school bus came and picked her up and she was super excited and she loved it. And they did lots of, you know, crafts and all sorts of things. And it was great for her. It was a good experience. Um, and then we moved, um, moved back to West Virginia and we sent both, um, Samantha and Josiah to a little small Christian school there and they had a great experience there and she learned to read there and he went to, um, four-year-old kindergarten there and he actually had the same kindergartner teacher that I had when I was in kindergarten. So that was really special. I'm glad that he, you know, got to experience that. Um, and then after West Virginia, we moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. And the house that we bought was in a good school district. Um, our school was just down the road. It was a fantastic school. Um, we really liked it. It was very high ranking. ranking. Um, but the thing I didn't like about it was that they had so much homework. And so at this time, Samantha was in first grade and Josiah was in kindergarten. And um, I had kind of homeschooled him a little bit, just like working with him. Um, it's not technically homeschooled, but, you know, um, he went to kindergarten. I was a little bit worried that he couldn't read already, and um, but he did fine. Um, but the main problem was, was they came home with so much homework. And we would talk to, you know, the teacher about it, you know, and say, well, you know, we love the school. We love everything about it, except for they have so much homework. And I'm talking like an hour and a half, two hours of homework every night for the first grade and kindergarten. So it was just, it was just too much. So uh, I felt like that the teacher had my kids, you know, eight hours a day at school. And then she was telling me what I was going to do for the rest of the evening with my kids. And I really just did not appreciate that. <laughs> and, um, you know, when we talked to them about it, they would say, well, that's just what everybody does. You know, the whole school district, no matter where you go, is going to be the same because that's just what we do. So we were like, okay. And so, um, that summer we got more involved with our church and found out that um, some of our friends were also considering homeschooling the next year. They were gonna pull their kids out. Another family was, they totally homeschooled all of their kids from the get-go. And so, you know, they were just very encouraging and like, Delisa, I think you can do this. You need to think about it. Um, so because of the homework situation and because I always felt like when I had them home, I was always rushing them. I was rushing them to get up, to eat the breakfast, to get to, to get on the school bus. I was rushing them when they got home to eat their snack, to get their uh, homework done so that either they could go play with their friends before it got dark or we could go to soccer practice or, you know, some extracurricular activity. And I hated that. I hated that. I just felt like the time I had them was controlled by somebody else and it was, um, you know, doing homework and I was always rushing them. So, you know, at that time also, Samantha was starting to sing in church, um, in her choir and stuff. And I'm like, you know, if we did, if we did do homeschool, then we would have more free time to do and pursue the things that the kids really want to do. So because I had the support of others and I wasn't by myself, I did it. And we really enjoyed it. Um, Samantha, we were just talking about the other day and she says she remembers like kind of being terrified about telling her friends uh, that lived in the neighborhood that they were going to homeschool because it was a very small neighborhood and you know she just wanted to be accepted she didn't want to you know be the oddball out but it worked out fine they got you know their schoolwork done during the day so that when their friends got home they were ready to play and so it was just a much more relaxed 
um, pace and uh, much more enjoyable. So then, in a couple uh, years later, we moved to Virginia. And so, you know, we kind of reevaluated, and there was a great co op there that our church had. And we also had some really good friends that um, we would swap um, kind of like childcare every week, but it wasn't really childcare. It was just, you know, we swapped with them, and like I would go out one week, and then, and she would have my kids, and our kids were the same age. They were actually second cousins. And, and so it was just really fun. And we tried to do, sometimes we just let them play. Sometimes we would do like different little science experiments that were fun to do in a group setting, you know, that sort of thing. But that was a great experience too. And our co-op there was just uh, phenomenal. It was really, really fun. And so um, then two years later, we moved to Texas. And, you know, again, we thought, you know, what are we gonna do? And um, here at our church, we found some great friends that also homeschooled. And so we just kind of fell into the homeschooling community here. And it was great. We had, the kids had a lot of friends that did the same thing that they did. And, you know, those people became our family and to this day are still like family to us. Um, and it was great as the kids moved up in their studies, you know, we're like, all of us moms would get together and especially like in junior high and high school, we'd say, hey, you know, what credits are you guys working towards this year? And if they needed a speech credit, then one of the moms did a speech class. If they needed a, a poetry or like a, a British literature class, then one of the moms would do a class like that. And so we just kind of had a group of probably about uh, six to eight kids that we just kept, you know, teaching classes to them, um, whatever we felt that we could teach. And then we also sent them to a school. Uh, it was a, a um, university model school where they went two days a week and then were homeschooled two days a week. But we also went with a group, you know, kind of a subset of that group to that school. So they already had friends there and it just, it was so easy. And we, you know, as they got older, we would ask the kids, hey, okay, here's your options for next year. We can homeschool. You can go to public school possibly if, you know, that's a good fit. <laughs> There's some Christian schools. And most of the time our older kids were like, don't mess us up. You know, we we have our credits in line. Um, we're also getting jobs and we like the flexibility of being able to get our stuff done in the morning. So we go work in the evening or they had sports. And so it was much easier to homeschool. Um, and then, you know, travel and do sports with them. So it, it just worked for our family to do that. I will say that a lot of their classes in junior high and high school, I did not teach them. Our, again, our friends that had expertise in those classes would teach them or we would send them to an outside co-op or when they got to be 15 or 16, they did, they started dual credit at our local, um, our local college. So, you know, um, they graduated with a whole lot of credits um, and that's kind of a different story for another time about you know the whether they should graduate with their associates or just one year or you know kind of what what happens when they do that but we will do that in another video but especially for our older kids it was a great um, scenario we have kind of changed that up a little bit more with our adopted kids um, because they have different needs. And so this year, for example, I'm homeschooling two of them for the eighth and the 10th grade. One of them, um, English is a second language and he's only been here for four years. So it's really a struggle still for him to read and write in English. Um, and you know, in hindsight, maybe we should have sent him to school or he would have been thrown into that environment. Um, it was just really hard to know. Uh, and there's a lot of factors to that also. And, um, but for this year, we are still homeschooling them. Um, and then we have two that are in the ninth and the 10th grade that are going to a public school. That's kind of a special scenario. It's a charter school basically where they do all of their stuff online, but they do go, it is a public high school. They are totally um, you know, accountable to those teachers, to that school, that school holds their transcripts and that sort of thing. And the benefit of that school is that they, um, can get their associates, um, from the local, uh, college by the time they graduate. That is possible. I don't know if we'll do that. Not a whole lot of people end up doing that because that's just really a lot of classes and a lot of hard work but it's possible and that's what they're going for right now. So 
they both wanted to start that so they could get hopefully two years of college out of the way so that their college education wouldn't cost as much money when they got out. Um, and again, we'll talk about how we do college and pay for college in another video too. But I was a reluctant homeschooler. It was not my dream, it was not my passion, but it became my passion because I just really enjoyed being with my kids, watching them learn, experiencing things with them. And homeschooling is not for everybody. It worked for us um, because of kind of our family situation and it worked because we had so much support from friends and also from outside groups for sports, for classes. Um, so Texas is a great place to homeschool because it's um, a whole lot of people do it. So, um, and we have lots of opportunities here. So anyways, I just wanted to give you that um, hopefully encouragement that if you are thinking about homeschooling, especially if you live in the state of Texas, it is a great place to homeschool. And even if you just homeschool for a year, you think that this might be the year that you would like to try it, then I would say go for it. We kind of always, um, if our kids want to try stuff, um, we really want them to, you know, like go into public school, that sort of thing. We want them to do it. And the back of my head is if it's a total flop, I can always bring them home and homeschool them. But I don't tell them that because I want them to give it their all and to really try and make it work. So anyways, I hope this was an encouragement to you and I hope you have a great weekend.